Can you believe that? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Quick disclaimer, my voice might sound a little bit different because I had surgery to remove half of my left thyroid, no cancer by the way, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have a smiley face on my throat from now on. So let's get into the sins. We start off in the middle of a party in France where main man Sam is trying to get his music tapes back from his ex Sarah when he starts to have a heavy nosebleed that causes him to pass out. While he is out cold, the zombie apocalypse happens and the undead are attacking right outside the entire time he is out. This guy has Jim and Rick levels of luck, not being attacked or bitten while asleep. Yeah, the door is locked, but you would think someone would bust down the door in a panic. Sam awakens to a blood-soaked tome, and when he calls out to Fanny, two dormant zombies attack. Funny. A creepy but real first introduction. Minus one sin. Sam witnesses a family in a flat being attacked. The dad kills the zombie, gets outside, and is able to get in his car with no issue. In order to signal to his family to run out and get in the vehicle with him, he honks his horn? Why would you make the loudest noise possible for feral flesh eaters nearby to hear? Or in general, why not use a cell phone to text your family, or if cellular service is out, a visual cue from the car like flicker the lights or windshield wipers or just wave them in while you're inside the car while the mom and kid wait behind the iron bars you just left the safety from or while they're in the balcony. Nope, gotta die stupidly because you aren't a main character with sensibilities. Sam sifts through everyone's leftover jackets and clothes and listens to their voicemails as they depict people being attacked or leaving final words to loved ones. Everyone kept their phones in their outer layers of clothing? Wouldn't most people of this day and age most likely have their cell phones on their person and be in the pockets of a moving zombie? Especially if someone called, left a voice message to a loved one, and was then attacked. So you're telling me, did the victims and turning people take their clothes off as they were turning and put them in this one pile before becoming zombies? Sam wanders the domicile alone, slowly opening doors and slowly peering around corners quietly. You would think he'd arm himself with some kind of blunt weapon after seeing what just happened, or anything to defend himself. It's not like he hasn't done this before. When he first saw blood all over the walls, he grabbed this glass, not knowing what the threat was. Now that he sees that zombies are out there, he just wanders around unarmed. Just like the beginning of 28 Days Later, I'm surprised there aren't any zombies in the streets just randomly roaming about. But it's the beginning of the movie, so we have to have that mysterious aura and vibe. Okay, quick survey class. The zombie apocalypse has just started. You wake up and your high-rise apartment slash flat is devoid of zombies. What is the first thing you do? Do you A. Board up doors and windows with what you have available B. Start making weapons with whatever you can C. Start making tapestries or posters to hang outside to signal that you're alive to emergency services or other survivors or D. Start looking for whatever food and water is available or start running water and storing it in case the water turns off I'll give you some time. So board up, get some weapons, make some signs, or get some food and water as soon as possible. What do you think Sam does here? He does E, none of the above. The first thing Sam decides to do in his quarantine in a zombie apocalypse is to start scrubbing the floor. You're in your dead ex-girlfriend's house by yourself with people eating each other. And the first thing you do is pull a Bart Simpson. It's amazing what some guys will do for a pretty face. Not me though. Wait till she sees the second rate job I do on these stairs. Sam is lucky enough not to be blasted by this guy's side of Sue by shotgun. Good thing his downstairs neighbor has a class C weapon and hunting license, and is double lucky that the sound didn't draw any zombies to the complex. Sam makes a decent call and uses a nearby pipe to open up the shotgun hole made to get downstairs to acquire the gun, ammo, and further supplies, even making some noise from his high point to make sure no zombies were around. Minus one sin. He tiptoes down the stairs and two zombies are just chilling out 
outside. Where were they earlier when he was on the roof? None of them came in through the opened front door when the shotgun went off or any of that loud noise? A zombie is at this barred window and he starts eating a can of food. Why not take it and eat it in your ex's apartment instead of letting your guard down in a room you haven't completely cleared yet? While checking the rest of the apartments with keys he found, Sam steps on a piece of glass and... This random zombie literally spawns in front of him and attacks him? Where the hell did he come from? Later on, we discovered that they don't make sound, but at the same time, you'd still hear him. That's the sound of my feet, by the way. Well, duh. He marks the apartment full of zombies with a giant white X. Smart thinking to prevent stepping in the wrong room later on. Minus one sin. Entering the second apartment, Jim, <clears throat> I mean Sam, yells, Hey! out loud to check if there are any sneaky zombies out there. Probably should shut the door behind you before trying that though. I forgot to mention this, but Sam put on a long leather jacket to prevent being bitten on the arms. At least I think that's what he's doing. Either way, minus one sin. And a paintball mask to protect his face from being bitten as well. Good think- Okay, live action Master Chief. Take your helmet off for no inexplicable reason. That's, why not? A zombie slowly rises in the barred off elevator showing us they don't make any vocal noise and only the sound of rigor mortis stricken joints snapping. giving legit reason to them being stealthy for once in a zombie show slash movie and one extra reason to be careful, minus one sin. I'd still take that pipe from earlier and jab it in the brain if I were him. No half measures, Walter. He has a checklist of all of his food and rations out day-to-day -day life. That is exactly what you need to be doing, minus one sin. Dude knows full well noise attracts them. With this knowledge, how do you think he lives his life? Not only is this dumb after the fact that after the glass breaking thing, but he is surprised that zombies are swarming outside because he made noise. 40 days later, Sam spends his time sniping zombies he has pictures of with a paint gun. Good way to kill time and practice aim if you ever get a good gun. Minus one sin. 40 days later and he is blue man grouping as loud as possible with random stuff. Sam opens a trap door in the apartment and finds a dead body after smelling its rot. You didn't pick up that scent over the course of 40 days? Most people would die of dehydration within three to four days and then rot would start to happen happen after another three days. Within the first few weeks, that scent would have been noticeable. Instead of dumping the dead woman and her husband over the balcony, he puts them in sleeping bags on a bed and locks the room. Morally, it's a sweet thing to do. Health-wise, no. A rotting corpse is never good to have around. Plus, you never know when an extra room could come in handy instead of having it blocked off. The water shuts off after day 40, and he is surprised. I really hope you took those days to fill lots of containers when this eventuality happens. Jogging in the apartment, good way to work on stamina in case you need to outrun zombies and make sure you don't go completely insane. A healthy body is a healthy mind, minus one sin. He shakes hands with the elevator zombie. You're risking him grabbing your hand and biting you, or potentially scratching you. If the infection transmits that way, he doesn't completely know. Well, at least he has containers on the roof to collect rainwater. He still could have, I mean, he's lucky enough that rain was happening. I don't know how much it rains in France, but at the same time, you should have at least, you know, filled water up with the uh, tap water you had. Either way, minus one sin. He sees a cat outside and rushes down and risks his life trying to get it. You know, I don't blame him. I would too. But why not go out in that leather jacket and helmet you got before though? He is attacked and is able to avoid being bitten and shuts the door in the nick of time before a zombie can reach him, cliche. What the fuck was that? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? Can you believe that? They can't believe that. No, they can't. She can't believe it either. Uh-uh. No! No. No. No, 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 no. 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 No.
How could you do that to a cat? Can you believe that? What do you think? <laughs> fuck Sam, fuck this. Don't shoot a fucking cat just because it ran away from you and it potentially and you potentially got bit. Your dumbass fault for not going out prepared. You had a lot of stuff you could have put on and you can't blame a cat from running from you. You it's just that's the common cat dad knowledge. Plus one sin for each one of my cats. <laughs> And one more sin for wasting what little ammo you have and making a loud noise just to shoot a cat. He sees his leg was scratched up and thinks he might be infected. Again, why not wear extra layers or something not easily biteable or cuttable? Normally, I'd send him for banging away at the drums and attracting a big horde, but dude's gone completely insane from seclusion. Many people would. This, in the sound of dozens of the dead barely making noise, is pretty on point and chilling. Minus one sin for the bitter reality of this. The one time he randomly sprays through the door and he hits the first person he has seen since this all started. If it was a regular zombie, he would have cracked the door open and said, Hey! Sarah survived the shotgun pellets to the stomach. All he really did was pull out the shrapnel. No stitching or anything. Eh, must be like healing in most zombie video games where you just drink an energy drink and you're A-OK. -okay. He'd kill you if he could. You know that, right? No. He's not gonna eat us. Are you sure about that? If I was Sarah, I'd make Sam kill the living zombie in their safe haven, but whatever. Low on supplies, Sam saws a hole in the closed off apartment full of the zombie family from earlier and blasts each one. I'm surprised he didn't do that earlier out of pure necessity and safety concerns. You don't want zombies miraculously breaking down that door and eating you alive at night, and you're always going to need more supplies. But at least he did it efficiently. You'd think a shotgun would have their heads less full of head. Sarah suggests the only option out of the complex is to jump from the roof. Unless they're dying like Kyle Crane levels of parkour masters, why consider that? She believes the zombies will never leave because they can live forever and wait for them. Uh, one problem, Sam knows for a fact over time zombies all leave an area if there's nothing to hunt, even after banging on drums and making loud noise. They left and were gone completely before, yet he doesn't bring this up with her. Why not use prior knowledge to say let's camp out here and not make any noise until the heat dies down. I've been here for months without any break-ins and we have food and water to spare until then. Nope, she says he's gonna kill himself and that strikes a chord with him so he agrees. Oh, it was all a dream! I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. On retrospect, I fucked up. Looking at the movie synopsis on Wikipedia, Sarah was just a dream he had about the girl he shot. Both her surviving and her rant about needing to get out before he kills himself was basically just his subconscious going wild. So I'll do something most YouTubers don't do in the same video and retract my statement and beat the comment section to the punch on saying, you realize she was just a hallucination, right? This will make a good experiment to see if people actually watch the whole video or not. Either way, I'm going to take away two cents for my mistakes. Sam lets the elevator zombie Alfred out of his containment and it looks him over and walks off. They have spent a majority of the movie kind of getting to know each other with some countless conversations Sam had with it, treating it like another human being, exploring the idea of a George A. Romero-esque retained memory in these zombies and favorable connection. I always enjoy movies that reasonably show how zombies retain some glimpse of humanity in a non-forced way. Even though, looking back at it, it's a little bit silly. I still think it's okay. I mean, he could have experimented to see if this zombie would have bit him in the past, not give it full reign. But you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take off a sin anyways. Aren't you pissed? They just left you here all by yourself. Huh? Now, you and I are the same. We're alone. One day, I'm gonna get sick of all this and get the hell out of here. And you'll be left all alone like an asshole. And you can't even die because you're just gonna stay here and you'll regret these moments. You're gonna think to yourself, why did I let him go? But it'll be too late because I'm gonna be far, far away from here!
The building fire alarm starts blaring and going off because I guess he left a candle, it fell over or something. And because it's near the end of the film, this specific loud noise causes the zombie horde to finally break through the front door. They weren't capable of this when he was banging loudly on the drums for god knows how long while screaming or shooting the shotgun. This zombie gets him to the ground and just stares at him with its mouth wide open. There's some primo leg action there for you to sink your teeth in, girl. Good thing the horde of mindless zombies are polite enough to go up one at a time to attack him despite climbing over each other when going through the front door earlier. In a bit of irony, Sam gets himself locked in the elevator after telling Alfred he is all alone with no dead around to keep him company. Now the tables are turned and Sam is all alone in the elevator with nothing but all the dead keeping him company. Minus one sin for that little bit of narrative coming back around. Thankfully he is able to squeeze up and climb the elevator shaft. You'd think he would have better security and contingency plans for this entire building at this point. A one-armed zombie comes up and Sam is able to blindfold it. Instead of bludging it to death while in incapacitated, he puts a couch on top of it so he can climb through the suicide hole from earlier. Why are you risking the zombie getting up and biting you? Double tap, baby! Climbing up, he maneuvers his way through the smoke and darkness as the zombies are practically frozen in the dark, not moving. So are they blind in the dark or by smoke? When was this a thing? We never explored zombies in the dark whatsoever. Sam just easily gets through and even slams the door without any interference. They build up the humanity of the zombies this entire time, but don't show to us or Sam that they are like this, that they are pretty much catatonic in dark spaces. And he automatically knows it and just rolls with it. He starts trying to grapple hook the building across the street as one singular zombie slowly approaches and is able to not only hook it, but get away in the nick of time. Now, this isn't a sin, but can you imagine this being the ending to the movie? Him just dead, hanging there from the side of a building? You know, I kind of want to see this as an easter egg in a future zombie game like Dying Light or the newly announced Dead Island 2. Just a random dead body hanging from a roof via a grapple hook. Not passed out for long, he climbs up the rope to the roof and hears the chiming of church bells in the distance. I guess that means there's survivors out there. It's a good thing he went across the street or he would have never been able to hear those church bells. Yes, I get it, symbology of being free or something and whatnot, but it's a sins video, sue me. And a quick review, overall The Night Eats the World is basically a slow, isolated version of 28 Days Later with sprinkles of Romero mixed in. The solitary experience of Sam's psyche as he tries to survive on his own is well made as he comes face to face with a world of death and attempts to persevere through it all. Due to its sluggish storytelling, I could tell many would be turned off by it, as many zombie fans are there for action, gore, and zombie survival. But The Night Eats the World is a completely internalized experience of one man. There isn't much else to that besides, you know, his experiences with one girl, a dead guy, and then just staying inside most of the time. The zombies themselves being completely silent and building affinities for others is a really neat concept. I just wished it was explored a little bit more outside of a 90% Sam experience. As a film, it's neat to dissect his mind, even if some loser on YouTube is judging his every move in terms of zombie survival. <laughs> That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Bonzo. Now, eat one of these, all right? You're gonna wanna huff a little glue and drink some beer. This is cat food, Charlie. Well, gee, I can't explain it, all right? There's some sort of weird chemical reaction that happens when you combine cat food, beer, and glue. It makes you feel like extremely sick and tired and you're able to fall asleep. <laughs> That's what the point of the mask is. Last chance to look at me, actor. Let's give him a hand! Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Spin